The best mechanics you should learn at each rank tier list. The hardest part about Rocket League is there's so much going on, sometimes it's impossible to know what to do to improve. I created a tier list ranked bronze to SSL with exactly what you should focus on to rank up fastest. But wait, Luke, why should I listen to you? At the time I'm recording this, I'm peak GC3. That's one rank away from SSL. So bronze up to GC3 will be my personal recommendations. But for the final SSL tier at the end, I'm going to tell you what pros told me are the best mechanics to get SSL. Also, if you're currently in the plat to champ ranks watching, you should hear this update from our coaching partner, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. The Grand Champ Bootcamp specializes in helping plats through champs get up to Grand Champ in 90 days time. And the sales team over at the GCB told me they have less than 100 spots left on their roster for coaching. So if you're hard stuck or you just want to join a community of now over 3,000 players to grind with, that way you don't have to solo queue, hit up the GCB Discord account to see if you might qualify. I know they just raised the standards on their entrance test and it's harder to get in. So DM them with keyword next to talk with a program expert and see if you might qualify. All right, glasses are going back on. Let's start the tier list, bronze to gold. Yes, I'm lumping all of bronze to gold in the same tier because the Rocket League rank system is broken and odds are you're just gonna place right out of bronze and silver straight into gold. In the bronze to gold section, I am only going to recommend one mechanic you should learn at this rank, and that is power shots. All you need to do to get out of gold is learn how to hit the ball, not hit the ball hard, not hit the ball consistently, just hit the ball. Go into free play or go into one of the basic shooting or goalie training packs and simply practice flipping into the ball and timing it so that way when you hit the ball, hopefully, you are dodging through it to add power. If you can hit the ball hard onto the opponent's side, people in bronze to gold are going to miss. Power shots, only mechanic you need to get out of gold. Platinum is the first proper rank. I'm going to give you some mechanics to rank up. Platinum is what I would consider the car control rank. You need to learn how to move your car where you want, when you want. I know that might sound crazy, but this isn't a shooter where you just WASD around and new players often need to just learn how to drive forward when they want to drive forward and back when they want to drive back. So rapid fire, I'm going to drop three mechanics in the plat tier, fast aerials, half flips, and wave dashes. These are what I call the one and done mechanics. They're mechanics that you need to learn. And if you've never played Rocket League, there's no reason you're going to know how to do these. So before anything else, let's build the foundation, learn how to do fast aerials, half flips, and wave dashes the right way before you get to diamond. Please listen to me when I say this, because I didn't learn how to fast aerial the right way, and I had to relearn muscle memory. So don't make the same mistake I did. As we go through this video, I'm going to keep putting suggestions in the cards up here with tutorials if you want to jump off and then come back here. Next mechanic I'm putting in the plat list is clears. All you need to do to get out of platinum is learn how to clear the ball hard across the field. If you can shoot the ball, not even on net, but just in the general vicinity of your opponent's net, maybe high off the backboard. Trust me when I say this, your opponents will clear out of the way and let you score. You're not at a rank where shadow defense is relevant. We're going to get there soon. Platinum, just learn how to do clears. You can practice this with any power shot or defensive training pack, or even one of the default training packs. Next thing in the platinum, tier, we're going to put power slide recoveries. Nothing fancy here. I just want you to get in the habit of holding power slide every time you land. Pay attention to the visuals on screen here. This power slide tap that you're seeing me do as I land is the secret to why pros can recover so quick. So power slide recoveries in the platinum tier. Lastly, since I know you asked for it, I'm going to drop aerial car control in platinum. And no, I'm not talking about aerial air roll. We're going to get to air roll in a second. In platinum, you just need to learn how to fly right side up, upside down. And if you're feeling really bold, maybe sideways in free play or in a training pack. Best way to learn this, in my opinion, is with Kevpert's 
aerial shots training pack, or you can just go into the default aerial striker training and practice flying right side up, upside down, and then left and right. One last thing, before you jump to the diamond section, please listen to me. Do not be the guy that gets the diamond and tries to learn how to air roll before learning how to fly upside down or doing any of the basic car control. I'm telling you this not to be harsh, but because I was that guy. I was the guy who was in platinum and diamond trying to tornado spin in rings without being able to fly upside down. And let's just say there's a reason I'm not SSL yet. Okay, moving on to the diamond tier. If platinum was where we focused on car control, diamond, this is the ball control rank. So we'll practice some fun aerial stuff, but first thing I want you to do is power slide cuts. The hot potato drill is my favorite drill to train this. You're gonna go into free play and you just need to learn how to tap power slide to turn sharp. This is gonna translate into your shooting, into your bounce dribbling. It's gonna translate into your offense, your defense, your recoveries. This is the foundation. So learn power slide cuts in diamond and you're gonna be so far ahead of the pack. Next thing you'll need to learn in diamond is shooting, but more specifically, air roll shots. Once you get to diamond, you're gonna find yourself in situations where you don't just need to hit the ball hard, but maybe you're coming at it from an off angle or from the side and you need to air roll to place it on target. The training pack, I want you to practice for this. I have two that I talked about in a recent video, shots you shouldn't miss and shooting consistency. These are both packs that are gonna show you how to air roll shot to get the ball on target. And if you don't know this, you're gonna find yourself in many situations where you just miss the open net or worse, miss the ball entirely. Next mechanic for ball control, I want you to train flicks. You're gonna need flicks when you start to get to diamond two, diamond three, because defenders are gonna start shadow defending you. And if you can't flick fast enough, well, you're just gonna get dunked. So no, I'm not talking about breezies or musties. For now, I want you to focus on front flip flicks, diagonal flips, and side flip flicks. Trust me, just focus on the quick flicks because these are the ones that are gonna get you 90% of your goals in diamond. Next thing I want you to practice in diamond is pinches. Honestly, there's not much to practice here, but you just need to know the basics of how to squish the ball into the wall because a lot of diamond players have bad defensive positioning. And if they're pushed too far up, a pinch might just lead to an instant goal. Next, I actually wanna go back and add something to platinum. This is a punishment if you've been skipping around the video. Come on, watch the video, help the retention. We're gonna go back to platinum and I'm gonna put a mechanic that you probably didn't think about because I forgot about it and that's dribbling into double jump pops. And I'm not talking about flicking. I'm not talking about fakes and low 50s. I'm talking about simply putting the ball in your car and then jump, jump to pop it up. You would be amazed at how many situations flicks aren't even required. If you're below Grand Champ and you need to beat one defender, it's not about how fast you shoot the ball on net because they're probably not going to have the best defense and they're probably going to be early challenging you. You just need to get the ball around them. This is going to be a godsend in Platinum and Diamond. I just had to throw that in there for you guys. Okay, fast forward back to Diamond. The last boring mechanic I'm going to make you train, and that is bounce dribbling. And the truth is, no matter how good you are at getting these flicks, off flicks usually only beat one defender so when you're playing in these diamond lobbies and your two opponents in 2v2 are back picking up their corner boosts you don't want to be going for flicks flicks are good against one defender but if there are multiple people playing back and playing passive which will happen in diamond bounce dribbles are the way to go and if you've seen my recent educational smurf video you know what i'm talking about spamming bounce dribbles is the key to get out of diamond. I'll have that video linked here if you wanna see how to do it. Bounce dribbling, please don't skip this before you get to champ. And now finally, onto the more exciting stuff. I'm gonna send you back to a training pack for diamond. I want you to practice shadow defense. Shadow defense isn't super important in platinum, but if you notice you're getting flicked or dribbled on or just the opponents have more mechanics than last time, well, then you need to get good at shadow defense. I'm going to put a shadow defense training pack on screen here because you need to get comfortable saving the ball when your car's front or car's nose is facing at your screen. If you don't, you're going to whiff easy saves and you're not going to be able to get out of diamond. And now finally, onto the aerial mechanics for diamond, because yes, aerial ball control is important. We don't need to get five touches on the ball. We just need to get one or two in diamond two, maybe, maybe diamond three. 
I want you to pick up your first directional air roll bind. Now, if you follow my settings guides, you should have already had this bound before, but now that you're in diamond, I want you to get into rings. I want you to get into free play. I want you to get into custom training and practice your directional air roll. You don't need to learn air roll right and air roll left. We'll come back to that. Just one to start is good. But once you get to diamond, if you can get this directional air roll going, it's gonna translate into every advanced mechanic we're gonna be talking about in a second in champ and grand champ. I'm talking ceiling shots. I'm talking air dribbles. Yes, I'm even talking flip resets. If you master directional air roll, you're gonna learn every other aerial mechanic 10 times as fast as you would without it. Okay, and last thing I want you to get down in diamond is basic wall shots. I'm not asking you to have pro level car control on the walls, but if you can't jump off the wall and air roll your car into an aerial, you're going to have a tough time. So learn how to get power off the walls. Make sure you're not back flipping off the walls or completely whiffing your shot or getting your jump eaten by a wall. You need to be able to generate power off the walls, especially if your opponents are only aerialing. Wall shots and being able to climb the walls fast is going to help you dust your opponents below champ. Okay, pushing into champ. If you've followed me up until this point, I'm now going to give you what you've all been waiting for. Buck, let's just throw them all up for the guys. Ceiling shots, air dribbles, and double taps. All of these, I am happy for you to start training in champ. I think people dislike some of my tier lists because they think I just tell people to never train mechanics. And don't get me wrong, game sense is important. But look, at the time I'm recording this, we're at the end of 2023, about to be 2024. If you don't have the basic aerial mechanics down, it's going to be incredibly hard to score in champ. So if you've been learning directional air roll, like we talked about in Diamond, in Champ, I'm happy for you to whip out some air dribble training packs like this one on screen, or even some more advanced and probably less useful packs like Double Tap Playground, still a great one by Whey Protein. Important reminder to the Champ 2s out there, please remember that you don't only use air dribbles and you don't only use double taps on offense. You can also use these off your back wall and off of your corners and defense to carry the ball out. And remember, sometimes it's less about scoring and more about just maintaining possession and beating the opponent. So please don't forget among all of this, I'm not putting this in any one section because I don't think it's fair, but please remember that at any point, if you're doubting one of your mechanics or you don't think you're going to pull it off, you can always drop into a 50-50 or a fake or a low 50, and that's going to bail you out of tons of situations if your mechanics aren't at zen level yet. Okay, so that's all the fun stuff for champ. I'm also going to drop one other controversial mechanic here. If you've seen my speed flip video, I explain more about when you can learn it there. Sometimes I say it's okay to learn in diamond, but if you're now champ one, absolutely learn the speed flip. The speed flip is one of those things that once you learn it, it's just going to upgrade your kit all around the field. Instantly, once you learn the speed flip, your kickoffs are better, your recoveries are better, even your pre-flips and some of your aerials become faster once you learn the speed flip. I recommend you start picking up the speed flip in champ, and you might even want to learn the speed flip at a lower rank sooner, you know, sometime in the future after I drop this video, as the average skill level rises. Second last for the champ section, I want you to practice a mechanic that 90% of champs completely forget about and that's backboard play. Believe it or not, you can use your backboard to help you save the ball. I know this is a foreign concept for some of us. Once you're champ and people start air dribbling on you and going for ceiling shots on you and trying to double tap on you, you can't just sit on your goal line all the time. If you are in champ and people are trying to go for these air dribbles on you, odds are their air dribbles are going to be rough to start out. At least most of the times their first touch off the wall is going to be shaky. You know, their second touch is going to be a little better and they're only going to recover the air dribble by the end. So if you can get good at challenging off your wall or even challenging off your ceiling, you will shut down attackers and champ and they literally will not be able to score on you. Backboard play in champ, please learn it. You can practice in free play by just using the left command that I've shown in some of my free play drills, or you can use a backboard defense training pack. And then lastly, I don't even know if I should mention this because it's not going to happen. Buck, what do you think? Should I mention it? Passing? Are they going to actually pass if I tell them to pass? No. If 
you've made it up to the champ ranks and you're tired of solo queuing, no, I'm not going to try to sell you something. I just want to make sure you know, if you didn't already, that I actually run Rocket League's largest free training Discord. Yes, I started a Discord about two years ago, and it is now the largest free improvement Discord with training resources, with packs, with custom guides, but also with the largest LFG system for ranked players currently out there. So if you're looking for teammates and you're sick of solo queuing, consider joining the Discord and hitting some people up for ranked. It's completely free to join, and you can always leave the Discord whenever you want. Click the first link in the description below to join. Otherwise, back to the Grand Champ section. We've got a insane list of mechanics. Let me be clear. These are the mechanics I think you should practice to go from GC1 to GC3, or at least the mechanics I've been practicing. And I'll share three mechanics that I'm practicing now that I'm closer to GC3 that I'm hoping will get me to SSL, or at least I've been told by some pros and pro coaches will get me there. But these first seven, okay, these are personal experience. I guarantee these will help you if you learn them. First one up is going to be pre-flips. Once you're in Grand Champ, any bit of speed speed that you can pull out in an unexpected situation could be the difference between goals and saves or missed opportunities and well conceding. So pre-flips, you got to get good at using your speed flip and predicting the path of your car before it reaches the ball so you can get those last second beats on offense and defense. Second thing I'm going to allow you to train in Grand Champ is redirects. Now, I think people have clowned on me in the past. I stand by this because I've told average players that they shouldn't train redirects. And uh, I've changed my mind about a lot of things. Redirects are something that, in my opinion, should only be pulled out at the more advanced ranks. Reason being is because redirects are high risk, high reward. If you're an average player in Diamond 2, sitting upfield for a redirect, it's not what you need to be doing to ranking up. Fact is, when you're Diamond 2, relying on Little Billy in the backfield to send you the ball, half the time, Little Billy is just going to completely whiff and your team's going to get scored on. In Diamond, playback, get behind your teammates. But once you're in Grand Champ, if you do see opportunities, okay, fair enough linger upfield you can cherry pick a bit and look for those redirects they will help out in the grand champ ranks and this is where you can pull out a redirect training pack if it's something you want although of all the things it's probably the least important on this list the next two are going to be much more important next mechanic to train in grand champ is flip resets yes this is not a mistake i didn't mean to mention flip resets in champ i only recommend you start training them in grand champ in my opinion because i think flip resets are on another tier than air dribbles. Now, let me know if you disagree in the comments, but for me, flip resets take another level of aerial car control and they're way harder to consistently execute, not to mention the risk reward if you mess one up. I mean, if you mess up a flip reset, you're probably just getting scored on instantly. Now, that being said, since the reward is so high, Grand Champ 1, Grand Champ 2, I would recommend you start to master your flip resets using things like training packs or even the free play checkpoint plugin, which I've highlighted in previous videos, if you have Bacchus mod, this is by far the best way to train flip resets, and it will shoot you straight up through GC1 and GC2 if you can just nail these every time. I know I just mentioned that air dribbles are more of a champ level mechanic, but ground to air dribbles and these sort of awkward air dribble setups, you know, where the ball starts on your car, or maybe you have to chip it up. This I'm going to put in grand champ. As you get to grand champ, if you can get air dribbles from unexpected situations, defenders aren't going to know what to do. Yeah, everyone can stop a peanut butter jelly, you know, air dribble from the mid boost. We all saw that one coming. But if you can get an air dribble in a weird situation, just in the midfield, or even going from like backwards to forwards, you're going to be lethal in Grand Champ. They just won't expect it. And it'll get you a free goal every game. And the last two groups I'm going to give you for Grand Champ before I talk about kind of Grand Champ 3 SSL stuff, I'm going to talk about some recovery mechanics, your curve dashes, your wall dashes, your squishy saves, your neutral jumps, all four of those we're going to put in Grand Champ. These all go in Grand Champ for the same reason. Any little bit of speed you can pull out in an unexpected situation could help you get the beat. So of all these, I want to highlight neutral jumps and squishy saves as being game changing if you can hit them in the right situation. Finally, for Grand Champ 2, kind of kind of higher Grand Champ, maybe Grand Champ 3, I want to highlight all the fancy flicks. I know I told you in Diamond not to worry about musties, and I stand by that. But once you're in Grand Champ, your musties, your breezies, your delayed flicks, all of these become more important because it will be your get out of jail free card in a lot of dicey situations. I want to tell you about some of the stuff I've been training to go from 
GC3 to SSL that I've learned from talking with a couple different pros. I'm gonna highlight some mechanics here that you may have never heard of, but stay with me because by the end of the next two minutes, this is all gonna make sense. First mechanic is something that I first saw coined by Kevper. It's called dodge control. So what this is, is using your neutral jump, using your dodge in sort of awkward setups to transition into air dribbles, to transition into ceiling shots, or whatever creative aerial play you might wanna go for. You may have heard me say this earlier, but trust me when I say the difference between a Grand Champ and an SSL is not being able to air dribble. Yes, any Grand Champ can air dribble. Any SSL can air dribble. It's about being able to air dribble in awkward situations, in places where defenders wouldn't expect it. And that's what this dodge control training pack that Kevpert made is all about. So I'm gonna show you some gameplay of me doing it here, but if you're high grand champ trying to push on SSL, give this pack a try. Give this whole dodge control mechanic some thought, because for me, it's been a real game changer. And this alone might get you from hard stuck GC2, GC3 to SSL. That and one other mechanic that Kev Pert put me onto recently, I want to highlight something he calls wall stops. Now you may have seen this in pro play, but wall stops are basically getting like these pops or these touches and then using the wall to stop your car and recover to get another quick touch or another beat or whatever it may be. Now, I haven't heard many other analysts or pros talking about this, but I have a feeling wall stops is gonna become a much more common term in the future because if you've watched any amount of RLCS play, trust me when I say every single pro is doing these automatically. They never mess them up. They're always getting their perfect first touch, recovering onto the wall and following it up. And this is honestly what I think contributes to 90% of the speed increase and the skill ceiling increase we've seen in the last two years of pro play. This is gonna get you so much faster in ranked because trust me, most GCs just aren't expecting these plays yet. And then the last mechanic I wanna highlight that I'm training right now in GC2 and GC3 is something that really stood out to me when I watched some Zanil and Squishy gameplay over on Zanil's channel last week, and that's ceiling defense. Pay attention to how in this video from Zanil, in the first four minutes of him defending LJ and Daniel, he goes for five ceiling stops and it all ends with him dunking a ceiling shot coming off the backfield. So the last kind of secret GC3 mechanic that I'm working on right now, ceiling defense. Get a little bit crazy in your rank games. Maybe your rank will dip a little bit at first, but once you master the ceiling defense, man, you're just gonna be shutting down attacks and dunking people like it's nothing in GC. And all right, finally, the SSL tier. What do you train in SSL? I'm just gonna tell you what I've learned from watching some pros and from talking with pros behind the scenes about what they think you can train at SSL. And let me take off the glasses here because I'm blind right now. And oh, one last warning. I wanna be clear this stuff I don't have personal experience, right? I'm GC3. So this is just what people like Squishy and Rizzo and Appjack and, you know, a lot of other pros have told me become important in SSL. SSL is, quote, the mastery tier. This is where everything needs to come together. So if you haven't yet, this is what I'm going to be doing when I get, hopefully, SSL in a couple months. Master both directional air rolls. Air roll right and air roll left, we're going to put on the SSL tier. If you're a bubble player or semi-pro and you want that last bit of car control to get to the pro level, all the top pros, especially the mechanical ones right now, they're using both air roll right and air roll left. So you got to master both once you hit that like 10k hour point and you know, your SSL, you're trying to get the last 1% or 2% out of your mechanics. Then you've got the crazy stuff. You've got your ceiling air dribbles. You've got your musty double taps. You've got your ceiling double taps, your double flip resets, all these crazy creative aerial mechanics that used to be like just reserved for comp freestylers and clip hitting. Now the pros are pulling them out at pro speed in game. The speed pros are hitting these mechs at lands is actually insane. But if you saw our RLCS this year and you've seen clips from the Zens of the world where they're going into those air dribbles and then recovering on the ceiling and shooting it down, you probably know the clip I'm talking about. All of these creative aerial mechanics are just becoming essentials for the top pros. Let me just put it this way. If you can find me a pro that can't double flip reset, please send them to me because I would be overjoyed to meet this person and find out their secret. But at least where the bet is going now, 
all of those fancy combination mechanics, right? Where you're combining a musty with a reset, with a double tap, with an air dribble, with the ceiling shot. You know, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. If you can just cross those over, that is what it takes to get SSL. And then the last pro mechanic that I think is going to become meta and is going to become game changing is all the recoveries. So I'm talking about the zap dashes. I'm talking about the chain dashes and the wall dashes. I'm talking about the speed flip pre flips onto the wall into the wall dashes when you're zero boost to get a beat. You know, these are the things that are separating the Zens of the world from like every other pro. So it's just the consistency of these recovery mechanics combine it with the aerial creativity. That's what it takes to be a top level pro now. That's my piece for the day. If you want more training packs or maps to train, click my video called Get Mechanical Now or Be Hard Stuck Forever. I show a bunch of new ways to train that I think are going to become the meta. And I also give my predictions as to what's going to be meta next year. So check that video out. And as always, thanks for listening, guys.